I come back every four months, but it's actually a little bit comforting to come back that frequently. Um, I like that they're still checking up on me, even though I've been cancer free for three years. They actually told me that if this had been 20 years ago, the type of cancer I had frankly was a death sentence, but because of all of the research that's been done, they had developed this very specific type of drug that was a perfect match for my type of breast cancer. And I remember in the first meeting with the oncologist, she, she used the word curable. She said, this is a curable type of cancer. We know what to do. And she looked at me and my husband and she said, don't worry, you guys are gonna grow old together and God, I almost cry thinking about it now. I held on to that. Now, when we talk about cancer and cure in the same sentence, we've made a lot of progress. If you look historically, the peak of what we would call maybe the rate of death from cancer was in the early 1990s, and we've made great progress. We've actually cut the mortality rate 31%. One of the examples of what we're doing here is studying flash radiation, which is ultra high dose radiation that can be delivered in less than a second, uh, uh, five to six weeks of dose of radiation in a single treatment and one, over one or two treatments. My research focuses on neurocognitive outcomes in kids after radiation by using techniques like proton therapy to reduce the dose to important parts of the brain. We were able to improve the IQs of kids by about 10 IQ points, which is a huge difference. And this is something that people didn't think was really possible. I am uh, really passionate about liquid biopsies. It sounds like science fiction about 10 years ago, but we can now take 10 cc's of blood from a patient who has potentially lung cancer, and within five to 10 business days, understand number one, that they have lung cancer, and number two, what the genetic underpinnings of that tumor are. That's important because if we identify those genes, we can take a patient and wed them to a particular personalized targeted therapy. My interest in natural products uh, began a long time ago when I saw that patients were using different compounds. They were trying intravenous mistletoe, IV vitamin C, muscadine grape skin, and pomegranate. Over the years, we've actually figured out there is activity by these natural products. Muscadine grape skin acts as an antioxidant to decrease inflammation, and the different components of mistletoe help people not only feel better, but actually can kill cancer cells. How did this all come about, and how do we know that these therapies are working? Whether it's in the surgical realm of technique or novel therapies in the terms of new drugs that we've developed, it's because of clinical trials. This type of movement and progress is predicated on philanthropic efforts. It's great to apply for grants. It's great to apply uh, for funding from the government. Those are challenging and competitive um, processes and not to say that we don't do them, but I can tell you in my own experience, it's really the philanthropy. And what I, what I tell to potential donors is that you are really the force that is moving this field forward. Thank you so much for your support. It has made all the difference for me and my patients. Without you, this would not be possible. We're incredibly grateful for your support of our program. Thank you so much for your generous support. On behalf of patients like me, thank you.